Thinking of unretiring, here to chat with me is Allison Dorowski from Life Yield. Hi, Allison. Hi, Hannah. It's great to be here. Great to have you. So in your article, you talk about how working can impact Social Security benefits, and you first mentioned the earnings limit. What is this limit and what happens if you exceed it? Great question. So the earnings limit applies to people who haven't reached their full retirement age, are collecting Social Security benefits, and are earning more than the annual limit limit that's set by the Social Security Administration. So every year that earnings limit number is updated, and you can find that on the SSA's website, and it's also updated entirely um, in an annual basis for individuals who are reaching FRA and for those who are a bit further away from their FRA. For example, if in 2022, for this year's annual limit, if you are under your full retirement age, are working and collecting Social Security benefits, if the limit is going to be $19,560, so for every dollar that you earn, the Social Security is going to deduct $1 from your benefit of payment over every $2 that you're going to earn until you reach your FRA. Now there's a special rule for the year that you attain your FRA, your full retirement age. And what that is, is it's going to be even higher of a deduction. So it's for $1 in benefits for every $3 earned above a different limit that's set. This limit for 2022 in the year that you're turning your FRA is gonna be $51,960. And then that's, It's interesting. It's higher. And that's because that's just right when you're hitting that cusp. And then once you turn your FRA, once you attain your FRA, you're no longer limited on how much you can earn outside of Social Security. Okay. So what happens if you return to work then after full retirement age? So if you return after full retirement age, there is no deduction. So you're able to earn as much as possible while still receiving your full retirement benefits from Social Security. Okay. Um, And then you also talk about a cost benefit analysis. So can you explain how that works and how that might help someone plan, uh, you know, what they might expect with benefits? So a lot of people rushed into retirement due to the pandemic. And now they're saying, oh, no, what should I do? Like I, the workforce is reopening, I can be earning more, I'm getting a reduction because I filed early before my FRA while continuing to work what do I do? Well, how can I figure out the best way for my financial situation, my families, et cetera? What you should really be looking at is a cost benefit analysis with a financial planner or an advisor who can sit down and go over what that would look like for you. So if you were to unretire and go back to work, if you're before FRA, what that deduction would be, and if you're after FRA, how that's actually could potentially be beneficial for you. So if you were to wait until after your FRA to return back, if that job earns you enough more than what you were earning previously before you retired, it can actually increase your potential Social Security benefit when you re-retire later. Um, And what happens if you want to stop receiving benefits? And can you explain the repayment of them? Yes. So there's going to be two options. Now, the first option is withdrawing your application for Social Security benefits. So you would actually have to file a legitimate application with the Social Security Administration to withdraw your benefits. You can only do this once in your lifetime after you filed, and you can only do so within the first 12 months of filing for benefits. So if it's past that 12 month window, you're ineligible to withdraw. And this would be pre-FRA. Now, if you were to withdraw your application, the Social Security Administration requires you to pay back all benefits that you received from them in that 12-month window or anyone else, also, and anyone else who has auxiliary benefits on your record. So like a dependent um, child or a spouse who's receiving against your Social Security record, you have to pay back all of those benefits that they received as well. And on top of that, if you received any Medicare premiums that were covered and came out of your Social Security benefits that you received, you have to pay back all of those Medicare premiums as well. And this could potentially open up some problems with tax implications due to the timing and when you're going to file for your benefits. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add or any updates about unretiring? Yes. So I think that my biggest suggestion would be, if possible, waiting till 
after your FRA, so you don't suffer any deductions or reductions that could potentially be avoided. But sometimes that's not possible. You have to return back to work earlier for unforeseen circumstances. But the most beneficial scenario would be if you could wait after your FRA and simply suspend your benefits. Now you can do this after your FRA and you are not required to pay back all of those benefits that you received. And this opens up even more of an opportunity for your benefits for Social Security because it allows you to accrue delayed retirement credits. So delayed retirement credits start on the after you reach your FRA and it's two thirds of 1% every month that you delay, which equates to approximately 8% every year. That's a guaranteed 8%. Now there's not a lot of investment vehicles that have that guaranteed 8% every single year from 67, if that's your FRA, to 70. But after age 70, there is no additional benefit in delaying. So really doing that cost benefit analysis is key looking at all of the opportunities and the options that are available if you really need to return back to the wor workforce, or if you're wondering, is there a possibility of increasing my benefit because I filed too soon? There are options available and trying to find the right one for you is always gonna be different. It's not a, a case that's gonna fit everybody. It's gonna be a case by case basis. Right, as most, as most things are. Yes, absolutely, especially with social security. It's all completely unique to you. No, two people's birthdays are the same. Well, they could be, but your earnings history right. isn't going to be the same as well. So you're probably not going to get the same benefit amount as somebody that earns maybe less than you who has the same birthday or the couple next door that are filing similar to you. Their benefit will be different. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, Allison. Uh, once again, Alice, Allison Dorowski, everyone. Thank you so much, Anna.